My name is Ashley Price, also known as Pink Lemon, the artist, and I am based out of Houston, Texas. So I typically create art that um, is very colorful, it's very vibrant, it generally focuses on women, and um, I like to create images that make just people feel really good about themselves. When you look at my art, you see all this color and you just are filled with joy um, when you see my pieces. So that's what it's about. Um, I have been painting for about six years now. I kind of just took a leap of faith and decided one day that I really wanted to be an artist. And um, I didn't know, you know, where it would lead to, but I'm very grateful how far I've grown over these years and developed as, an, as a full-time artist. So just recently, I happened to get my art in retail stores, which I'm so excited about. Um, my canvas art is sold in stores nationwide, and I've been growing my brand, expanding it as much as I can possibly by creating different items, um, printing my art on t-shirts, creating affirmation decks, creating coloring books, creating original works of art on canvas and paintings. I even paint on purses. I just love to just be my full creative self and just do what I can as an artist and just really spread as much uh, positivity and self-empowerment as much as I possibly can um, within my community as a black woman. As a creative in the industry, it's really hard to stay focused and just to you know remain passionate about what you do. But one thing I can say as an artist and for anyone out there that is a creative like myself, um, the best advice that I give to anyone is just to really keep going and keep growing um, just put your all into it and you know do what you love don't let anyone hold you back from um, you know your dreams or your passions definitely do what you love focus on your your craft and just go all in with it You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trot me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like the moons and the suns with the certainties of ties. Just like hopes springing high, still, I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head, lowered eyes, shoulders falling like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries? Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling I bear in tide. Living behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. We are doing a shoot with the amazing Ade. We are in Soho, y'all. We are here being bad. Yeah. Getting work, slaying.
So my name is Dr. Isabella Efron. Um, we I started a culture and heritage alliance with my husband in 2012 after you know um, you know working in the past years with artists. Um, from 1995, I started curating arts and traveling to the U.S. Um, my base was mainly Chicago, so um, from 1997 throughout, you know, I continued to promote arts. And that's how I started Culture and Heritage Alliance to be able to work with artists internationally. So our biggest project um, will be the African World Peace Festival in September, and. Um, it is a big project for us because it's almost like a week celebration. You know, we like to engage our community, the children in the community, and then for the weekend, just engage people through music and arts and, you know, food and entertainment and make, um, bring Africa to Fayetteville, um, North Carolina. My passion is all art and food, you know, cooking. So if you don't know me, <laughs> I like to cook and I've always run African taste, I mean, taste of West Africa, um, downtown Fayetteville. So my passion is all, you know, meeting people, cooking for them, sharing my culture, and it's it has always been, you know, part of me. Help us continue to provide educational programs, promote peace, culture, and unity through the arts. Consider making a donation at www.cultureandheritagealliance.org. Meet like-minded, extraordinary women. Expand your knowledge base and make the right connections. What Napping is doing and the work that they are creating and honoring women everywhere can't be matched by anything. Celebrating 20 years of breakthrough networking, nap them. I think it is extraordinary, first and foremost, but it's absolutely necessary. Nap them is the National Association of Black Female Executives in Music and Entertainment, with 20 networks located across the United States, Canada, and Africa. It's a place for us to have a voice. It's a place for us to share our voices. Join NAPFEM and do it today. It's easy. One of the things that is blessing my life now, 16 years later, is that the genuine relationships that I built in 2002, now those sisters are executives. And it was a NAPFEM sister who hired me. Join us online at www.nabfem.org. What's up? It's your girl Erica Banks, and when I'm in Fayetteville, you know I'm only listening to 104.5. Tap in. And, um, All right, cool, cool, cool. You ready? All right. How you doing, Ms. Erica? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. So you're back from Atlanta. I am. Doing All Star. How was it? Woo, lit. Lit? Yes. I couldn't make it because the traffic was bad, and I heard they were stealing cars. Oh, you know what? They were breaking <laughs> stealing. They were taking ties. Okay. I, I mean, we appreciate you coming, though, and being here with us. We know you're busy. We know you're hot right now, so I know your schedule is hectic. Crazy. So, you know, for the people who don't know, where are you from? I'm from Dallas. Dallas, Dallas Texas. Texas. Okay. Yes. A lot of people think I'm from Houston. I'm not from Houston, y'all. I had to keep I'm correcting from Dallas. Them. I had to keep correcting them today. Kept saying Houston. I said, oh, she's from Dade D Town. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So, being from Texas, how often do you get back to go home and visit your people? So, now that you got this stardom and this, this. Um, really, now it's rare. It's so rare. Um, I can't even remember the last time I went to Dallas on a personal, you know, day. Oh, but geez, I know it's they all missing good. You. I know they missing you. <laughs> they are, but that's why we got the phone, you know? That's At, why we got the phone. So, we're going to go a little back and talk about your history, and then we're going to go forward. Okay. Uh, so, I was reading that they said that you got into poetry first. Right. And that was your first love. Can you tell me a little about how, you know, how that started? Was you always writing or? Yeah, like in school, um, language arts or writing was my favorite subject. Mm. I just love to write. So, you know, with writing, you write stories, you right. write poems. So I found a love for poetry as a kid, and then I grew up, and I just kind of transpired it into rap, and now I'm talking to you. Dallas so. must have good education because you said language arts. And, you you know, know what? That's my how you know. But <laughs> oh, we say English class. Today. That was English class. You, you want to go the easy route. You want to be lazy. You was a lazy student. I was. I wasn't barely there. That's what it was. Okay, I at least you're honest, though. <laughs> okay, so you 
finished high school, you graduated, right. and I also read that you went to college as right. well. And I think a lot of people don't know that, that you educated yes. and you were going there to be a nurse. Yes, I was. I now, was. could you save lives right now? Did you get that far Well, if I, get, if you I know fall what? out? <laughs> don't fall out in front of me. <laughs> because just don't do that. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get as far as into the program. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try music because I don't think this is really what I want to do. You know, so I tried music and it worked. So how did your family take that, being that they're so pushing education? I think I read yeah. that your father was a, is a nurse now. Yes, he is. So I, I figured that that's pretty why, pretty it much is. the reason why you I got into to, it. Oh, my dad a nurse. That looked cool. Let me do that. Nah. <laughs> and how did they take it when you say, you know, this ain't for me? We, um, My mom, she cried. She wasn't here. Yeah, she cried. My no, dad, no, no. he was just like, it better work or you going back to school. <laughs> So yeah, but it works. So they it worked, now. yeah, because now now he can stop working. Oh yeah, okay. Well, my <laughs> he can stop working. About a, a being struck. I'm relaxed. I'm, hold on now. <laughs> so coming from that, coming from school, mm -hmm. and then you stop going to school. You're gonna do the music thing all the way through. Mm -hmm. How was it? Like the first couple of months or those first couple of, that year? Was it hard? Was it struggle breaking out or was it easy? Um, Did it come to you easy? Did you know what you was doing? What your steps were? I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just kind of going by faith, doing what I thought was the right way. Mm -hmm. um, my mom was my manager for a little bit. Um, I had Max, who's over here behind you, who, mm -hmm. you know, did my media and all of that. Okay. So it was really just us three, and we was just kind of... Getting it done. I remember when you were doing the mixtapes. I remember a couple of them went viral before busted. Right. So I remember the mixtape. Now I can't rap. Never tried. Never did. Now my my, my daddy minister. So okay. he, my daddy minister too though. <laughs> so I couldn't listen to rap and R and B. I had to do it under the covers at night. Yeah. You know. Oh, no. but, <laughs> <laughs> but if you so you did the mixtapes. Those were those were the things. What really do you think separated you from a lot of the Dallas rappers? Because if I'm not mistaken, they were real big on dance. Yeah. Dance battles and yeah. dance raps at the yeah. time. What what I don't know too many Dallas yeah. female rappers right. that are out there. So I know you probably like bored tearing up all these guys. Yeah, <laughs> you know, with me, it's like you said, uh, Dallas is very cultural when it comes to dancing. So a lot of artists do make the dance music, but I'm not a dance music kind of person. Mm -hmm. I can make a club record, but that's different, you know. And um, with me and just my, my consistency, you know, I put out three projects in a year yeah. by myself. So... Nobody was doing that, but that's what set me apart. So we gonna fast forward. So when the bus it just it exploded, like it came out of nowhere. TikTok yeah. is just phenomenal. Yes. Pick it up, hey. You know I don't never give a f 
Ay, nigga looking at me in the club. Ay, he gon' have to throw a couple dubs. Ay, I don't even wanna more talk to the n Why he always tryna come and see what's up? Uh, brown liquor all in your cup. Ay, say he wanna put it on my Uh, couldn't make it to the club. So, I'ma throw it back on face. I don't never be on no Tinder. Eh, I don't never be on no date. Lie, told me I can have a couple racks. Shit, told him I'ma need a belt. Ay, nah, got a n ain't never seen. Yeah, cause I ain't never seen. When did it first get to you that, you know, thousands of people were out here doing this busted challenge? Like, did you recognize it? Did y'all put it out? Did y'all put it out first? And when everybody just thought it was just a, a, a miracle or was it, did it hit you like, you know, hearing your song on the radio for the first time? Um, You know what? It was that. It was me hearing it on the radio for the first time. Because mm -hmm. I always thought, I wonder what it felt like to hear myself on, on the radio. radio. And then it happened and I was like, oh, this is what it felt like. Did you cry? Um, I didn't cry. But it was just very exciting. It was unbelievable. You know, it was like a surreal moment for me. So now when I hear it, I just be like, oh, I'm on the radio today. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so how yeah. did you, when you saw the videos and stuff like that, did mm -hmm. that, you know, that kind of push you into the light really, really fast? Yeah. How did you take that? You know, because I know your DMs was probably blowing up. Yeah. Your mentions was probably blowing up. How did you take that instant, that instant success, that instant stardom at that point? Um, I'm still taking it in. Uh, I really just had to accept that that's what was going <laughs> on. You know, I'm waking up every day and seeing my name all over the media. So that was new for me. And I had to also learn that um, I cannot beat everybody up on the Internet. Yeah, no. I can't do it. You know, I tried, but I got tired. And when you get money, they like to sue. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought about that, too. <laughs> they, I definitely they, thought about that. Yeah, because when they say, oh, well, come on, beat me up, I'll take the beat. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So it get crazy. But. So who is your support team? Like, you know, with all this craziness and, you know, those cyber people that's behind the scenes doing out, who do you go to, to to fall back on to get that back home, get that feeling back? Who's your support team? Um, I always go with family. Mm -hmm. You know, family first. I always go with family. They know me best. You know, so if they know me best, they know it's best to tell me. They know how I'm feeling. So as long as I have my family, not even just my parents, you know, like cousins, uh, brothers, grandparents. As long as I can resort back to them, you know, I'm good. Okay, so the segment we're doing is where we interview. It's called Female First. It's okay. where we're attributing great artists. So who would you say was your motivation? Who was somebody that you saw yourself trying to be like, the first female that you saw in that MC light? Who was that Who was that for you? Was it? For me, it was Nicki Minaj. Mm. I always say that it'll always be her. Um, she inspired me, you mm. know, as a kid with the whole Barbie era and her just being so animated, you know, and me right. being animated yeah. actually came from me seeing her do it. You know, I just do it my way, <laughs> right. you know, so that, that would be way. Nikki. Yeah, the Dallas <laughs> way, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, with you being, you know, kind of the, the baby in the game, has anybody reached out to you to kind of help you out, show you the moves, show you the way of how to navigate in this whole uh, music scene? Um, I wouldn't say they have reached out to to necessarily navigate me or, or point mm -hmm. me in directions, but uh, there have been artists that have reached out and let me know that they love my music. Mm -hmm. um, even Shaq, which I thought was crazy. He even reached out. I'm like, what What are you doing? You I know? Hope, I hope Shaq didn't do the Busted Challenge. Oh, Lord. I don't think he did. <laughs> I, I, he, I don't think. I we we put a limit on Shaq. So... <laughs> Because yeah. he's going to destroy something. He ain't going to bust it. He's going to destroy it. Whatever he's busting, get on. <laughs> <laughs> so, for the people out there, what's next for Erica Banks? What What do you got coming up? What's What can we be anticipating? What are we expecting from you? What do you What are you going to bring to us? Right, right. So, everybody is anticipating the next single, mm -hmm. uh, which is Toot That. We're about to uh, get behind that, which is actually one of my favorite songs by myself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's also, I mean, also featuring B King, who's from okay, Houston. Okay, okay. So he turned the record up as well. So we're gonna get behind that, you know, refresh it, do a remix. You know, it might be your favorite artist on it. I don't know. <laughs> Tap in, 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then after that, we just going to keep it going and just keep on putting the music out. Well, we're so thankful that you were able to sit down with us here in Legends Only Studio with myself, Big Trent, and, you know, WCCG and 104.5. We, you know, we play y'all day, all day down in North Carolina because we from North Carolina, baby. It. So okay. we got to keep our Southern Southern Queens Please on the line. Please keep So we're we going to make sure we keep an eye out for you. We're, we're so thankful that you came. And Sister. You beautiful woman. Girl. Hey, queen. Do you know how beautiful, resourceful, and capable you are? Listen. I am in awe of you. You've shattered the glass ceiling once again. Sis, you did that. I love everything about you. Supported, confident. I see the struggles that you go through, and I know you feel unappreciated, but no, I appreciate you. I love that you're perfectly imperfect, so don't even think about trying to be perfect. Be gentle on yourself. I see you winning, shorty. Baby girl, celebrate you because you deserve it. And it looks good on you. Listen, do not waste time on people who don't respect you, appreciate you, and value you. Don't be afraid to create your own path to success and own it. Loving yourself is always the move. I'm watching you, and I'm taking notes. You don't need validation, Queen. We need you. I need you. Amiga, tú lo hiciste. Tú lo lograste con confianza y con apoyo. So please don't give up. Make sure you're taking care of your mental and your physical health. Just when you start overthinking and doubting yourself, stop. You are the woman someone is hoping to love. I am so proud of you. And I love you. One last thing, and don't forget it. You are. You are. You are that queen. That queen. That queen. I love you.